Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to get that bleached wood look with a very dark piece of furniture. And guess what? You're not even gonna have to use this stuff today. I'm gonna do it all just using paint. So if you wanna see this makeover, just keep watching. Here is my dark end table nightstand that I'm gonna be giving a bleached wood look today. This finish is in rough shape, so it definitely needs to be re redone. I got this as part of a set off of a Facebook Marketplace. I got three pieces for $100, so that was actually a very exciting deal. And this is in great working order. It just needs a little bit of a refresh. Today's video is sponsored by my friends at Zebra Paint Brushes. I'm gonna be using some of their brushes featured in their Best of Zebra Kit to complete my makeover today. And they are gonna be giving you 10% off by using the code Christina10 over the next 10 days. So don't miss out, you can get a great kit like this that comes with a cute tote. The first step in lightening up this piece to get a bleached wood look is I have to strip off the existing finish. I'm using my Surf Prep Electric Ray 3x4 and I have a 120 grit sanding screen on here. I also have an attachment that hooks this up to my Festool dust extractor. This is my setup that you always see me use, but you do not have to have a fancy setup like this. You can use an orbital sander or a sanding mouse from the hardware store. I make over furniture every day, so this is why I have this awesome setup. You can also hook this sander up to just a regular um, shop vac, so that's an option as well. This piece is from World Market according to the previous owner, so I knew I was working with a not total real piece of wood and that this had a veneer on it. So I'm using that 120 screen to remove the existing finish, but I don't want to damage the veneer on here, so I'm going very slowly and not being super aggressive with my stripping. That's why I'm using a medium pad versus a coarse pad. I love the square shape of the sander because it really helps me get into corners like this on furniture. I like it better than a round style. This piece has a really cool all wood handle, so I'm gonna keep that and sand it down like the rest of the piece, but I'm gonna remove it so I can sand the handle as well as the drawer front. The majority of the time I spent on this piece was the sanding. It is a lot of work, but it is always worth it to lighten up a piece like this and give it a completely different look. To get into the details even further, I grabbed my Dremel rotary tool and put the sanding attachment on here. This is a medium grit sanding disc as well, and just got into those little detailed areas. Once I was done sanding, I'm just gonna wipe back all that dust before I start my faux bleaching process with paint. I do wanna note that my sanding job did end up with a little bit of these brown bits in the corner. You could definitely hand sand that out. I know that my paint is gonna cover that up so I don't get too concerned with getting all those cracks. Since I sanded most of my finish off, I don't have much to clean, but I am going to clean the inside and the sides of the drawer with some Dixie Belle White Lightning TSP soap because I am gonna paint this a different color. So I'm gonna be using a paint wash to create this bleach look. These are the three colors I typically use to do this natural wood look. So I'm gonna go with the lightest one since I want a bleached look. This is Sandbar, so it is a very light tan, so it's gonna mimic that bleached wood look without having to use bleach and doing a bleaching process. So I am going to create a wash like you have maybe seen me do on my channel before. I do one part paint, one part water. I mix that up really well. It's gonna be really runny and watery. This is what you want it to look like. I started out by doing a slip coat of water in the section I was gonna stain first. I do this because I think it makes it look a little bit more even. And then I grabbed my absorbent rags that I love to do my washes with, grabbed a pair of gloves, and I'm gonna start off with that zebra trim and surface brush. This is one of my favorite brushes because it's really easy to hold. Um, it gives you a smooth finish and the bristles absorb a lot of paint. 
So here I have that slip coat on. I'm doing this initial wash of paint and just wiping it back with my absorbent cloth. And I didn't like the way it was looking. It was looking too orange. It definitely wasn't looking bleached enough for my liking. So I decided to skip the watering down portion and just go on full strength with the paint with my watered down paint. And then I kind of let it sit there for about 30 seconds. Typically I wipe it back right away, but this time around I didn't use the water slip coat. I let it set for about 30 seconds and then I took my rag and wiped it back. I'm making sure that I'm going in the direction of the grain when I'm wiping so that any streaks I may create or any blending that I'm doing is going to look like a natural grain stroke. Another thing that I want to know is I kept this rag full of paint for the whole piece. I didn't keep getting clean rags. I used the same one for the whole piece. And during this painting process, I grabbed the square brush a lot. This is one of my all time favorite zebra brushes for getting in little small trim pieces like this. It just puts the paint on perfectly without splashing the other areas that I've already done. The square brush is great for getting in little indentions like on the top of this end table. and I'm still using that same rag that I started out with, it's really helping keep the color on the way that I want. And another trick I found out along the way is that I needed to paint the entire leg all at one time so that I didn't have paint gooping up on one side and drying up on me. So I painted around an entire leg in one little session and then wiped that all back at the same time. So I'm going to paint the inside of this drawer A because I think it's going to look better and B because I wanted to try out the silk all in one paint with these zebra brushes. So I'm giving this a scuff with a 220 sanding paper and then I'm going to wipe back all that dust and then I'm going to get to painting with that all in one paint. So I'm just grabbing my silk all-in-one paint in the color Hampton Olive that I used on last week's project and I'm going to start out with the triangle brush. This brush is really great for getting inside of corners like this. So I just lined the edges with it and did all the corners and it helped get the paint in there really well and nice and smooth. Then to get the paint on the bottom and the sides of the drawer, I grabbed the chiseled wedge brush. This is really packed out with lots of bristles and has a nice angled tip. So I thought this was going to be great for the flat surfaces. I really love the way the paint went on with this. It glided so nice and easily. And the thing that's great about these brushes is that they hold more paint than a typical brush. And that is a really good thing for this all in one paint because you do want to use a little bit more paint than you're used to when using like a chalk mineral paint or a chalk style paint.
And again, I love using that triangle brush in corners like these. I was way behind on my project for this week, so I came back out at night and did a late night painting sesh to get my second coat on, and it looked amazing. I also did some late night top coating too with my clear coat and flat, and I'm gonna be using the same chisel brush that I was just using on the silk paint. I love using this one for top coats which is another awesome thing about Zebra. I like using their brushes for painting and top coating as well. There are lots of different applications for them. If you have been around for a while, this clear coat is no stranger to you. You know that I love using it on all different sorts of pieces of furniture. And I particularly love using it on a natural raw wood, bleached wood like this, because it's just gonna keep the piece nice and flat and not make it look shiny or shellacked. It doesn't leave any brush strokes behind, especially on a raw wood piece like this. And it dries down really quickly and is protective. I did two coats on this piece and just waited a couple hours in between coats. So I let everything dry overnight and look at how beautiful this silk turned out with these zebra brushes. I'm gonna have to try that out on a future project. So I'm just adding my handle back on now that everything is dry and then I'm gonna put my drawer back in. Okay, so my faux bleached piece is complete. Remind you, here's what I started off with and here it is now. I love this look. I can't believe I got this look without using one ounce of bleach. It's so light and bright and natural. This could fit in anybody's home and you could style it up a bunch of different ways. You really have to enjoy sanding to tackle a piece like this, but it was definitely worth it. Thanks for joining me for today's video. I handpicked some other raw wood finish videos for you, so make sure you check those out before you leave. I will be back next week with another project. Thanks for being here, you guys, and I will see you next time.